Okay, so now uh, that we have ordered pairs, we are going to start with relations. So relations are going to help us then build functions, order relations, equivalence relations. So we're going to do a bunch of things from them. Um, so what is a relation? So let me just uh, give a couple of um, silly examples. So for instance, um, divisibility relation. We say that um, A and B are related if A divides B. Okay, so this is a number that you multiply A for and you get B. That's called the divisibility relation. Uh, we can talk about the cousin relation among people. A and B are related if, when are they related? If, let's say, they have a common uh, grandmother. Okay, if two people have a common grandmother, we say they are related by the cousin relation. Okay, uh, or the relation. A and B are related if A is less than or equal B. Let's say. So that's an order relation. So that's what I mean by the word relation. It's something that relates element, different elements in different ways. And there are all kinds of relations, so the concept is going to be very loose. Definition, a subset, well, let's call it R of a cross B. So remember, this is the Cartesian product of A and B. It's a set of pairs of elements of A and elements from B. Um, just a subset R of A cross B is what is called a relation from A to B. So that's it. There is nothing to it. It's just a set uh, of pairs from A and B. And the idea is that imagine you have your set A and your set B and your relation is just a set of pairs taking one element from here and one element from there another element from here an element from there so that's a relation it's just something that connects elements from one set to another it could be that you have the same set in both sides that you can have a relation from a set to itself or just two different sets. And we're gonna see very different kinds of relations in what's uh, coming next. Okay, but I wanna define something a bit more general, slightly more general. So a relation, if we only say a relation, and we don't say from where to where, is just, all we're referring to, is just a set of pairs. Okay, so we're being very loose. Whenever you have a set of pairs, we call that a relation. Uh, where is that going from where to where? Definition. Suppose we are given a relation R and we want to define a few things. We want to define the domain of R, range of R, and the field of R. So what are these guys? The domain of R is a set of all the A's such that there exists a B such that the pair A comma B belongs to R. Right, so everything that is um, associated to something. Okay, so everything that is associated to something. Every, all the first co everything that is a first coordinate of somebody in the relation. And the range is everything that is a second coordinate of somebody in the relation. Instead of all the B's, such that there exists an A, such that A comma B belongs to R. Okay, so that's all the ones in the range. And the field is just the domain of the relation, union, the range. So the union of these two, two guys is called the field. Okay, so question. Here, when we wrote um, domain of R and range of R, we need, uh, where is this A um, taken from? And where is the B taken from? Right? If you want to apply the subset axiom to define something, we need to take the elements from somewhere. Where are we taking these guys from? Uh, not from R, they don't belong to R. They belong to the tuple that belongs to R, but it doesn't mean what do they belong to? And, and you would say, well, from A and B, but this is, we are using this definition of, uh, 
relation. The relation is just a set of pairs, so we, are not, we don't have an A and B beforehand. We want to define the A and B are going to be the domain and the range, so we're kind of going to define the A and the B for the relation once we have the domain and the range. But so far we don't have any. How do we define them using the subset axiom? So here is a trick. Um, it's a little trick. Um, and the lemma is, uh, you're gonna find it funny, is that the field of R is nothing more than the union of the union of R. Remember that the union, this is the capital union, this is the one that is you just take all the elements of R and we union them together, right? So recall that the members of the union of something are the members of the members of that something, yeah? So let's see if we can prove um, why this is the case. Uh, okay, so suppose um, we have a pair uh, x comma y in the relation. Where do x and y come from? So if they are in the relation, then we know that uh, x x comma y belongs to the relation. Okay, so these two guys up here are members of a member of R, right? That means that x comma y is a member of this guy, of this guy right here, that belongs to R, right? I'm gonna just write it down. It's a member of x comma y, which is this one, Right, x comma y is exactly that whole set. So the pair, the set x comma y is a member of the pair x comma y, which itself is a member of R. Therefore, x comma y is a member of the union of R. Right, because it belongs to something that belongs to R. And now x and y themselves belong to something that belongs to y, namely this set up here. So x belongs to this one and y belongs to this one. Therefore, x and y, each of them, belong to the union of the union of R. Yeah? Cool. Uh, the other way around, I leave you guys to try the, for an exercise, the other inclusion, that if you belong to the union of the union of R, then you belong to the field of R. So that means that we can define the domain and the range up there using our um, field that we just defined. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do uh, right here. Where do they belong to? They belong to the union of the union of R. Belong to the union of the union of R. So that's how we define the domain and the range. The A and the B that correspond to the relation, we define them just like that using the union of the union of R, which we have from the general union action. Okay, one more uh, quick thing to mention, an NRE, an NRE relation, what do you guys think should be an NRE relation? It's just a set of N tuples, like the same way as a, and the ones that we had already, these are just uh, binary, these ones up here, sometimes are called binary relations, because they are a set of pairs, right? Binary corresponds to pairs. Now, if you have an n array relation, uh, that's a set of n tuples. By the way, what is an n tuple? We didn't define n tuples. What is an n tuple? So, how will you, how will you guys define? Uh, let's start with a three tuple. So, how will you define it? Something that x comma y comma z. The idea is that we want an object that not only contains a set elements x, y, and z, but also the order is important. So there are a few ways of doing that. One way would be to do Take a pair, x comma y comma z. Yeah, so this will do the job. And then you can do the same for n tuples, extend the tuples. All right. So next time we'll look at functions. See you next time.